So I'm continuing my reading of the standard works and what I'm doing in this series. I'm reading through the entire standard works of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. This consists of the Bible, the Book of Mormon, the Doctrine and Covenants, and the Pearl of Great Price. I am doing this in chronological order of events, not according to publication or volume, so I will be jumping around a bit as time goes on. In addition, when I am reading from the Bible, when they appear, I will be including portions from the Joseph Smith translation. This is an inspired correction or translation of the Bible done by Joseph Smith to restore those portions of the Bible that were lost over the years. This is going to be chapter 39 of Genesis, so let us get into this. Joseph, prospered by the Lord, becomes ruler of Potiphar's house. He resists the advances of Potiphar's wife, is falsely accused and cast into prison. Keeper of the prison commits its affairs into, J into Joseph's hands. Again, a rather uh, deep chapter here, a lot of good information. We'll see if we can get it done in one video. Verse 1, and Joseph was brought down to Egypt, and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, bought him of the hands of the Ishmaelites, which had brought him down thither. And the Lord was with Joseph, and he was a prosperous man, and he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. And his master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his, to prosper in his hand. And Joseph found grace in, the, in his sight, and he served him, and he made him overseer over his house and all that he had put into his hand. And it came to pass from the time that he had made him overseer in his house and over all that he had, that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. And the blessing of the Lord was upon all that he had in the house and in the field. And he left all that he had in Joseph's hand, and he knew not aught he had, save the bread which he did eat, and Joseph was a goodly person and well favored. Okay, so Joseph is sold to Potiphar. Remember from the last video, or not the last video, two videos ago, chapter uh, 37. Potiphar was the soldier. When it says he was the captain of the guard, it means he was the head steward over Pharaoh's house. Now, this was a high position. He had his own house. He had his own servants. He had his own retinue, his own entourage, you might say. And Joseph became his head servant. And I love that statement that he knew not what he had, save the bread which he did eat. He trusted Joseph so completely that he didn't even bother looking at the inventory reports. He just knew what he was fed. He, he knew what he could see. He knew he had food on the table. He had his home. He was doing good. He didn't need to know anything else. That's how much trust he had in Joseph. And Joseph here says, um, goodly person and well-favored. Uh, goodly means, uh, he didn't just look good, he was talented, he understood things, he had skill. I mean, he was only 17 when he was sold. I don't think it took him very long to show that he had a natural wisdom and understanding on how to do these things. So, Joseph was doing good. Now, verse 7. And it came to pass after these things that his master's wife cast her eyes upon Joseph, and she said, Lie with me. But he refused and said unto his master's wife, Behold, my master wanteth not what is with me in the house, and he hath committed all that he hath into my hand. So the word wanteth, that mean, uh, that's knoweth, if you didn't know. That's a Joseph Smith translation correction, changing the word wanteth to knoweth. So, verse 9, there is none greater in this house than I, neither hath he kept back anything from me but thee, because thou art his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? And it came to pass, as she spake to Joseph day by day, that he hearkened not unto her to lie, with, to lie by her or to be with her. In other words, and again, he had so much faith in Joseph that everything in his, Joseph had free access to everything in his house except his wife. That's how much trust he had in Joseph. Verse 11. And it came to pass about this time that Joseph went into the house to do his business, and there was none of the men of the house there within. And she caught him by his garment, saying, Lie with me. 
And he left his garment in her hand and fled and got him out. And it came to pass when she saw that he had left his garment in her hand and was fled forth, that she called unto the men of her house and spake unto them, saying, See, he hath brought in an Hebrew unto us to mock us. He came in unto me to lie with me, and I cried out, and I cried with a loud voice. And it came to pass when he heard that I lifted up my voice and cried, that he left his garment with me and fled and got him out. And she laid up his garment by her until his Lord came home. So she literally tried to physically force herself on Joseph. She wasn't just pleading with him anymore. She was physically trying to force him. And in order to get away from her, he slips out of his coat and runs. And so she then uh, claims that Joseph was trying to rape her. And if you know, she holds on to the garment until Potiphar comes home. She doesn't let the guards take it. She keeps it with her so that she can prove her story. 17, verse 17. And she spake unto him according to these words, saying, The Hebrew servant which thou hast brought unto us came in unto me to mock me. And it came to pass, as I lifted up my voice and cried, that he left his garment with me and fled out. And it came to pass, when his master heard the words of his wife, which she spake unto him, saying, After this manner did thy servant to me, that his wrath was kindled. And Joseph's master took him and put him into the prison, a place where the king's prisoners were bound. And he was there in the prison. Now I have to note that he did not kill Joseph, which would have been the standard punishment for that back in the day, that, that they didn't play around. He would have been executed for something like that. The fact that he didn't indicates to me that he did not fully believe his wife. He knew Joseph. He trusted Joseph. He didn't. Re I don't think Potiphar really believed the story, but he couldn't go against his wife. If he publicly opposed his wife when she made a public accusation, that would have created such a scandal that he likely would have lost his position in Pharaoh's house, would have been a massive, massive problems for him. And so he had to publicly uphold his wife. But he didn't kill Joseph because he didn't trust her. He didn't believe the story. He only put him in prison. Verse 21. But the Lord was with Joseph and shewed him mercy and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. And the keeper of the prison committed to Joseph's hand all the prisoners that were in the prison. And whatsoever they did, and whatsoever they did there, he was the doer of it. The keeper of the prison looked not to anything that was under his hand, because the Lord was with him, and that which he did, the Lord made it to prosper. In the, uh, when it says, uh, whatsoever they did there, he was the doer of it, Joseph Smith's translation uh, changes the word doer to overseer. So whatsoever they did there, he was the overseer of it. So just as it was with Potiphar, Joseph showed himself of such skill and understanding and integrity that the warden of the prison let Joseph take over. Joseph did everything. And the warden and he says to keep the prison looked not to anything that was under his hand. So now that doesn't mean the warden just sat lazy back. He, he did if he put Joseph over something, he didn't take a second glance. He didn't worry about it. He gave Joseph the or he gave Joseph the right or the authority to do something, and he knew that it would be done. He didn't have to second guess. He didn't have to check on Joseph. He just knew it would be done. That's what it means. He still did his own stuff. He still had his own work he had to do. But he had less work because he could just trust Joseph so much. And we see that as, you know, the Lord had mercy. He gave Joseph this understanding. He inspired, I think he inspired Joseph on how to act and what to do. Joseph had understanding himself. So we can see that Joseph was not blessed. God didn't just tell Potiphar, oh, be good to Joseph. No, he, he blessed Joseph to show Potiphar that Joseph was a good guy, that Joseph knew what he was doing and could be trusted. And he blessed Joseph when in prison, to show the warden of the prison, the keeper of the prison, 
that he was a good man that could be trusted. I like that. A lot of you know, we, we shouldn't expect God to change the hearts of other people just for our benefit, you know. It should be help us to act in a way that will change their hearts. That's what Joseph did. But I will see you in the next one.